Namaskaram everyone and welcome back. So today we are diving into your topic that is both fascinating and mysterious. The concept of recalling past life. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to remember not just one or two but 10 lifetimes? Sadhguru sheds light glowing why nature has put a barrier in place to prevent us from accessing these memories and why it is actually a good thing. Join us as we explore the profound implications of delving into the past. But be warned, Sadhguru reveals why it is crucial to treat carefully when it comes to unlocking the secret of our past life. Let's embark on this journey together and uncover the mysteries of the mind. Get ready to expand your understanding and delve into the depths of consciousness. Let's dive in. There was like past life regression. This is a better terminology. At least they're a little more straightforward about it now. Hypnosis essentially means that you're not really trying to access reality through hypnosis. You're trying to establish whatever you wish, isn't it? Isn't that the basis of hypnosis? If you hypnotize a person, you're not hypnotizing him because you want to take him into reality. You want to invent reality, isn't it? If you want to take somebody into reality, you need awareness, which is just the reverse of hypnosis. Now that they are saying it's hypnotherapy, so they are going to invent another reality which they believe is going to correct you. So you have one kind of problem, you are trying to balance it off with something else. It may work in short. If someone is very sick, anything is okay. If it's going to help them a bit, it's okay. But if you are asking me as a spiritual process, definitely no. Regression, it's all just psychological nonsense generally, but suppose you can do it, let's say. You could go into past life regression. What I would say is, most human beings right now, the way they are, they cannot even handle one lifetime's memory. Just one lifetime's memory is freaking the hell out of them, isn't it? If you remember ten lifetimes, your mind will crack up. Don't you think so? Hmm? One lifetime's memory, people have become miserable. Just remembering the last twenty-five, thirty years, people have become totally miserable. If you remember ten lifetimes, I can imagine your state. So, Nature has put a certain barrier and it's good. There are other more responsible ways of doing this where we remind you not in terms of memory, but it works itself out in form of energy. People been to some Yama meditations, are there? Okay. Some Yama is essentially this, that layers of unconscious mind can be brought to a conscious level and worked out, but not on the memory level, on the energy level, because if memory comes, people will just crack up. They cannot handle the load of two or five or ten lifetimes. Your mind is not capable of handling that. It will definitely crack you up and confuse your life completely. If you remember things from past life and there are all old people, let us say, in your neighborhood, your neighbor's whatever, your neighbor's husband or let's say your neighbor's dog happened to be your child in past life. I can imagine you. With the kind of emotions you have right now, you will not be able to manage this. It would drive you crazy. So it would be utterly irresponsible. If somebody is capable of opening our past lives, it would be utterly irresponsible to open it. We do such things in a very controlled condition for specific purposes for certain people, but that's very rare. It's not necessary on a daily basis. Samyana is a good way to go through it. 
because it works out on a mental level. Come to a mental level of remembering the actual detail of it. But you see something is working itself out, which is very obvious to you. That is good for you, but it cleans up. But remembering is not good. But if it's hypnotherapy, it is definitely not a regression. It's just a, it's an attractive name. Probably it's intriguing for people to call it regression. The moment you say it's hypnosis, I don't think it can be regression. Most of the regression processes that are happening are purely psychological manipulations. They don't touch anything. Speak about uh, the futility of going after, you know, trying to remember past lives and all of that because one may not know how to handle all the experiences that will come with it. Uh, but spiritually and on a meditative level, won't it be useful to pick up from that and consciously pick up from that? I want you to just imagine yourself. Suppose you suddenly realize one of these young women was your mother in your previous life. You go like this teary-eyed to her, she's not going to like it. You can't ignore her now, because she's your mother, all the emotions come back. Enormous emotions. And all the things that were left unsaid and undone, now you want to do it. But she's not willing, she's a young woman, she's not your mother, she'll laugh at you. Worse, this boy who's sitting in front of you, you suddenly remember in your past life he was your wife. See, already <laughs> you cannot deal with this, isn't it? You cannot deal with this. Current life's emotion itself is wringing you out, isn't it? This life's emotion itself with different relationships that you held in your life is just driving people crazy. If you remember all this, it is not going to serve any purpose. Only at certain times, because of a certain work or if you want to call it a mission, was on hand. We have done certain things to remind people of their past lives, but after that never again, because it's not important. I met a lady, I met a man first, the aggrieved husband I met first. The man comes to me and, uh, you know, he moved from India to United States and he's doing very well there, successful, everything. But now, the wife has been seeing psychics and on the phone, she's on with them, on with them, paying hundreds and thousands of dollars as bills. Above all, the psychic has convinced her, in her previous life, Tom Cruise was her husband. She believes one hundred percent. So, she buys a huge house in Beverly Hills and every Saturday she's throwing parties, hoping one day he will walk in. And she's sure he will walk in because the psychic has told her, you just be in that area, just keep throwing parties, one day he will walk in and carry you away. So, he came to me and said, Sadhguru, what to do? I have uh, Tom Cruise's wife at home. <laughs> I said, uh, okay, you send her to me, we will see. So I said, let her come to the in engineering program. We had a retreat on the Great Lakes uh, in Michigan, so a beautiful resort and uh, we have a, a in engineering retreat which we are not doing anymore. So she came for that. So as soon as she comes, uh, she wants to meet Sadhguru, meet Sadhguru, meet Sadhguru. I said, no, 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 go through the program, after that we will meet. But uh, she was putting so much pressure on everybody, no, I have to meet him, I have to meet him. So uh, on the first evening, you know, the evening introduction happened, next day I avoided her somehow. Next day evening I got stuck with her, I had to meet her. Then I said, okay, and we sat. Then uh, she opened up. I think my husband has told you already, but I'm telling you this is one hundred percent true. What do you think? I said, yes, it is true. 
Even I, I am very clear. In your previous life, Tom Cruise was your husband, yes. She was very happy, at last she found a guru. Then I said, you know, I also knew him very well in his last previous life. But he was so ugly in his last life, but this time he's turned out pretty good. She said, what? It never occurred to her, in his previous life, he need not look the same way. <laughs> so this <laughs> past life nonsense can get into a deep mess. You don't do that. Handling this life well is important, very important. This is on hand. <clears throat> and uh, another problem that people have is, Sadhguru, was I with you in your last life? I said, see, if you were with me and you didn't make it, I don't want to have nothing to do with you in this life. If you're a fresh candidate, let me look at you. If you're a failed candidate, what do I do with you? So I'm saying, all you will do is get into hallucinatory states of imagining all kinds of things. This is what you need to get out of because mind has a million compartments. It can make up stories in such a way that you cannot imagine possible, it will make it absolutely real. See, there are schizophrenic people, people who have multiple personalities. One case which has been recorded is a person having thirty-two full-fledged personalities, thirty-two. But I am telling you, mind has the capacity to generate a thousand if you want. That is the capacity of the mind. Unfortunately, most human beings never explore it. If you give this much material to it, it can produce so much out of it. Like today, you saw, you, you know, you program the computer, it can produce every permutation and combination that is possible from that little information. That's what your mind is doing in a much more complex way. So don't yield to these things. As we wrap up in today's discussion on the intriguing topic of recalling past life, it's essential to reflect on the wisdom shared by Sadhguru. He illuminated the natural barrier that exists within us, safeguarding our minds from the overwhelming flood of memories from multiple lifetimes. While the idea of unlocking past experiences may seem alluring, Sadhguru cautions us against the potential chaos and confusion it could bring into our present life. Instead, he encouraged us to embrace the present moment and focus on the living fully here and now. Remember, our journey through life is enriched by experiences we encounter in each moment, shaping us into who we are today. So let's cherish this beauty of this present existence and navigate its mysteries with gratitude and awareness. Thank you for joining us in this enlightening journey and may you find peace and clarity in the unfolding moments of your life. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care of yourself. Namaskar.